Oh well, yeah. Welcome to another episode of Vern's Misadventures. So what are we doing today? Well today I want to show you a new project that I got. So the deal with this one was a friend of mine rescued this he said about 15 years ago. And he rescued it from somebody who told him to throw it in the trash. And he said, well, can I just have it? And they said, yeah, but what good is it? <laughs> anyway. So as you can see, it came complete with the bag. It has the power supply. Yeah, what it is. It is a compact SLT-286. And for those in the audience who don't know what that is, I'll tell you. It's Compaq's first entry into the laptop market. So, if you unlock it, it opens up like about so. Right? Anyway, it was a pretty good deal for me. I was happy. He was happy. So now, I got a new machine. Uh, the keyboard comes off as well. So when you're set up to use it, you don't have to be on such a high platform to try to type or whatever. You can set it out here. But if you're kind of pressed for space, kind of like our situation here on this desk, you can put it up there and put it up. So the keys feel nice. As you, I don't know how the white balance is playing out here, but it's very. The keys are very yellow. The body of the machine doesn't look too badly yellowed, although it does look possibly slightly yellowed. Mainly, it's just dirty. So what I propose we do right now is get after it with the glass cleaner and maybe some baking soda and see how nice we can make it look just with that. So let's just go ahead and get on there. Oh look at here. It's got your little word perfect key key guide or whatever. That's kind of neat. Personally I'm not a big fan of the stickers. I think they deface the machine. But a little thing like this to lay in there out of everybody's way. I like that. I really do. So let me get some equipment and we will get busy. Alright, so. So why aren't you turning it on now, Vern? Show us that it works right this minute. Well, I'll tell you why. Because I opened up this power supply. And inside it, thankfully, it had a couple of X2 caps that looked like they were the modern nylon kind, right? And that was good. But then it looked like it had a couple of old reefas for two little Y caps right close to this connector right in here. So they look like the reefas look like they had some cracks in them. I did go ahead and power it up because I didn't have any Y caps to replace it with. So I've ordered some white caps. They're not here yet. And with the ice storm that happened this week, I don't expect them to be here anytime particularly soon. Although they were promised by today. But that was before the storm. So what I think we do is we just clean that in a little bit. It doesn't cost anything. And yeah, we don't need parts. And we just clean at it. So I got a replacement for the Dallas chip in the 286 SLT. So that way we'll be able to do our settings and uh, be able to keep them. Comes with a, the chip, comes with the socket, and it comes with a battery. 
And then we also got the uh, replacement Y2 caps. I got 50 of them. I think I need two. You know how that goes. So, I guess that's a good place to start. Looks like the feet fell off. That's always fun. One of them fell off. I had to take them off to get to these screws. Now they won't stay on. Not all that surprisingly. So yeah, I cleaned out this thing. Um, give it a scrub down and some some glass cleaner, maybe some. I don't know if I had to use it on this, but I had to bake the soda out too. Probably didn't use it on that. So as you can see here, we have the uh, nylon caps here. This one, this one, and this one. But down here, these itty bitty guys right here. These are reefas. And they have cracks on them. So I don't think they're very long for this world. And these caps that I bought to replace them with <laughs> are a bit bigger. I don't know how that's going to work out. I guess we'll figure it out. This thing's been off for unplugged for weeks. So I'm not too concerned that it's holding any power. It should go without saying that um, you'll want to be careful fishing around in here if you think it might be holding any voltage. Of course, when we think it's not dangerous, that's when it's most dangerous. Let's get a, an insulated screw. So there's a little spring clip right here. I bet that's it. Oops. Did that do it? And it helped. Yeah, there we go. That was it. A little spring clip. So don't want to take that apart. You gotta take that screw out. And maybe that screw doesn't have to come out. I don't know. At any rate, there is a little clip here that holds this on. on this end, now we can just unscrew these probably. Yeah. So the ones with the little star washers go to the heat sinks here, I guess. I need an, an apparatus. Here we are. So those come out. And there. And there. So I don't see any bulging or anything on any of the other caps that would give me any kind of concern. So with those out, maybe we can get the board out of there, I don't know. Okay, we're going to pull that connector, looks like. This gets a little involved, man. Okay. So, okay, get this on camera, for sure. So, pull this one off of here, the black one. We're getting there. Not in any big hurry. There we go. And then we got a big connector here. With parts in there. That's not too cool. So we have a an un, a non-insulated wire pointing towards C13 here, right here, or right by the LED. If you want to look at it that way. So the other end is a, a black wire. So non-insulated 
goes near the LED and get this out of our way. I think it should come out of there now. Well, who knows? It might have its own agenda. through huh? we got this Y Y cap 2200 pico ferry get two of those so there's the two caps we're gonna need to deal with right there Baby's warming up. I think we can trim some of these pins before we even get started here. Might make them a little more congenial. We'll put some fresh solder on it before we get started. Falling out. Not that. That's pretty easy. All right. Next thing. Grab my over there. So here's our reef of white cap. There's a crack I was talking about right here. Let's see here. It's right across there. The other one is right here. Okay, a little, little resistant, no biggie. There it goes, it's gone. There's not much to do here. Alright, here, here are our massive replacements. Alright, well. <laughs> so here's new versus old. Little difference in size. So it's 250 volt, 2200 picofarad. This is 250 volt, 2200 picofarad. Yeah, so they're the same value, they're just a little different, a little bigger size. Perhaps I should put I mean as long as it fits in, I guess it'd be okay, huh? Yeah? the hot setup be to drop that one straight down and bring this other one in some and so what we'll do is kind of lay that over there and kind of like so And that way, it'll be away from that screw hole.
That'll get them. That'll get them in the board anyway. Get them on the board. I think that'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. And then the other one is going to be going to need to walk over that way. This way, on both sides, I think. But there is room for it, I think. I'm not sure I'm thinking a lot. Alright, I'm not really sure about much. So, let's see, we'll bend this one this way, we'll bend this one this way. So if you want to avoid a cold joint, the best way to do it is, in my, in my humble opinion, because I'm not a professional or anything, there's, I have learned some things as I've been doing this. Uh, you want to put the soldering iron on one part of the leg, on one side, and then come up about 180 degrees out, and and do the solder. And if you're transferring the heat through the pin, then you're not going to have a cold solder joint. Whereas if you're touching the solder with the, uh, the soldering iron, you may... It may make a puddle, but it won't necessarily be fused to the part. So we'll just cut these off. So these are non-polarized. Best I could tell, I mean, there is no difference. It's an AC circuit anyway, which means that it's constantly going to be switch switching polarity. So... Let's see, how are we going to do this? Let's start here. I'm going to take this this way. Right. Kind of like that. And then uh, the idea is to walk the entire part a little further in. So, once again, we'll do it over here. Spacing wise, we can use the old part. So hopefully that gets us in there. Let's see. Let's just see. Yeah, that uh, measurements didn't quite come out the same. What happened here? Well, I got some some tweakage going on here. That's part of it. these touchy. Okay, well that might be better. <sighs> Alright. touching anything we don't want to touch. Possibly. No, probably. Well, that's not too bad. I think that will probably be just fine. Okay, so let's bend these a little bit so we can get them soldered in. We'll see if we can make some fireworks, huh? So 
nice little upside down funnels. Actually, they'd be right side up when you turn the, the port right side. At any rate, I just clip these legs. And hopefully, you can avoid the dreaded magic smoke. This other one, yeah, it's got that same. It looks like the beginnings of a crack. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. Yeah, the other one was okay. It hadn't cracked yet. This one had already cracked. This one right here. At any rate, they have been replaced. I guess we put it back together and see if that works. Hmm, that'd probably be the hot soap. Screw up and, and win. I think we made it. Awesome. There we go. That looks pretty good. That looks like the real thing. We'll start with the two things I think might give me the most likely to give me a problem. Okay, then over here on this side. Cable has to go back. So, I was actually a little confused which side it was supposed to come out of, but then I remembered it had this little deal here for the ground, so it's pretty obvious. And this sucker fits snug. Come on, man. Get on, man. Bare wire here went to the towards the green LED towards C13. Next thing, I put all these guys back. All right, so these three screws went here. So that just kind of holds the. Uh, the part to the it's heat sink over here. It's got like a, a heat sink pad or this. Instead of having the adhesive and all that, it's got a little pad that it sits on. Boy, my voice is just terrible. Today. Okay, and then I guess we can put it in the bottom. She's a rocking, rolling. Why is that? Oh, there it goes. Okay, so then that can go in there. Push that in there a little bit. And the pop. Over here. Let me just put these screws back and then it'll be back together. We plug it in and see if it goes zap. So I'm going to turn it off, turn off the surge protector at the switch there. And, uh, we'll see if we get the sizzle pops or if everything just seems like it's okay. And we got a green LED. Maybe we can test it against the machine, huh? Got a glue stick. Maybe we can use a glue stick for that. Maybe where we can maybe remove it again if we needed to. Alright. 
these nice and clean now look at them maybe they're getting a little getting a little doughy huh sometimes rubber feet will do that especially when introduced to certain cleaning compounds that they just don't like all righty so here's the machine let's see that's the motor and where is it plugging it oh over here okay so cord over here I guess looks like that plugs in right there okay let's see what it does when we put power to it all right, I'm gonna turn on the, the dealy. Oh yeah, we got an orange light here. We got an orange light right there. We got a green light, so that's good. That means it's charging it. Well, I'm sure it won't hold the charge, but it is charging it. All right, let's turn it on. Sometimes it takes a minute to, to power up because uh, the battery's so low. Nope, I've got lights blinking up here. The screen is thinking about doing something. Well, here we go. Yeah, let's put this in here. There it is. Set the brightness a little too low. That's all. 640k. Okay. How about that. Just get her. Yeah. So none of the settings are set. So we get this error here that says. Can y'all see the screen? I cannot. So that's why we got to put that clock in there. Because it's also a... Uh, it'll provide a battery for the CMOS. And that'll keep the settings even. Even when we unplug it and put it away. So, if we press F1. Let's see if it'll boot to the floppy. Here we go, it's working. Starting in this DOS. It's not too far off. Thursday, 126. It is, what is today's date? 219. So it'll be 02, 19. Eight fifty-nine. No, that's not right either. That's fine. Yeah, man. Look at that. So DOS 622 running off the floppy. Let's do a directory. What happens when we run that mem exe? Oh, there you go. So it says we use 62K of RAM and we have 578K left. I believe it has basic on here. Yeah, Q basic. So So Q basic is a little more modern than some of the basic I'm used to working with. Escape to cancel. So the keyboard works. It's just pretty yellow. We're going to have to work on that. Um, and you know, like I say, the machine, it's pretty solid. It seems like there's like some dust behind this glass here, or this cover, this, this screen. I don't know what you'd call it, but it, if there's like an outer layer of plastic or glass or whatever it is, it, it doesn't feel glass. I don't know if I can separate that and clean behind it without destroying it. That dust will seem pretty trivial if I try to take it apart and, and ruin it. So I don't know. I was thinking, I may think long and hard about that one before we do that. I'm not going to do this right properly, but we can do it anyway. 10. And then we just do a... And 
press F5 to run, is it? Yeah. Let's see. There it is. No more Retha. Cool, man. So it's going to be a pretty sweet little rig when we get it going. Uh, once we get the setup disc going, I have to use the GoTek for it. I don't have a physical copy of that. In fact, the only discs I have are some that I just happened to find in another device in the storage area. So I have these. Um, and they, one of them just happened to be, well, it's DOS 622, discs 1, 2, and 3. And it was some kind of uh, data files or something on the disc that I actually installed it on. And so I have this secure soft here. I may be able to reformat that and use it. Overall, pretty happy with all this. So right on. So we got to get it apart. Do the Dallas chip. I got to retrobrite these keys. It's a big project, but it's fun to just kind of enjoy it for a moment, huh? F5. All right, y'all. Well, we'll have to save the rest of that work for another episode because this one is just getting way too long. I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd like to invite you to do so so you don't miss the next episodes coming up about this machine and others. Hey, until then, y'all take care.